Hey guys, Ivan here and we are one day out of Portugal Pro, but before the Portugal Pro happens, we're gonna talk about what is going on in bodybuilding world right now and as you can see in this first photo, you can see Ian Valier who is curling some kettlebells, 20 pounds and his arms are looking absolutely insane, sick, I mean this guy is a monster, one of the biggest guys, I mean I don't know if he's the biggest like pound for pound, but one of the most freaky looking guys, he does have that crazy freak factor, especially because of the crazy arms and delts, so as you can see right here his arms are looking absolutely insane. As you know, he is getting ready to compete, I believe he's gonna be doing Tampa Pro, Arnold Classic of course as you know, maybe Texas and then of course Mr. Olympia if he gets a qualification, which I'm pretty sure he is going to get one, uh, he was 7th at the Mr. Olympia and it seems like he made a lot of progress since that Mr. Olympia, he had a, basically a full year, almost a full year to progress and uh, if you follow him, if you watch Fuad Abiyad's podcast, you know how devoted he is, if you watch his Instagram, you can see his progression in lifts, he has gotten really, really freaking strong and if he wanted, he could do, he could do powerlifting really well. And now he's not getting stronger just for the sake of getting stronger, he is getting stronger through the movements that he needs to do to improve his weaknesses. And if you ask him what are those, he's not gonna tell you like a weight answer, I need to come bigger, I need to come better, blah blah blah, he's gonna tell you exactly and he knows, it's his chest and it's his back. And in this most recent update you can see that his chest is pretty thick. Now on the photo on the right he's doing the pose differently, usually he flexes the chest and pushes the elbows a little bit more forward, but this was actually a screenshot from a video before he fully flexed, before he fully hit the pose. This was in the transition and he liked the screenshot and so he posted it. Now, if you look at it, I mean, it does make his chest look bigger and fuller, that's true, wider. But it kind of makes his head look bigger uh, compared to the rest of his body, so he kind of looks a little bit smaller. It kind of takes away from the freak factor. If he can somehow fix that, like maybe pull his head backwards a little bit more, <laughs> just what I'm thinking, I don't know if I'm right with this, but it just looks like his head is kind of making the rest of his body look a little bit smaller when he does it this way, but it does make his chest look bigger and fuller. I don't know, I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Anyways, he does look amazing, but I wanted to show you this photo for another reason, and you can see the highlighted comment right there in the comment section. So Sergio Oliva commenting, he says, I never respected Carabell till today. And really, it doesn't matter what he said, it's just the fact that he commented on his photo. Now, you guys know that Sergio had a big problem, very big beef with Nick and with Fuad Abiyad. And uh, Ian is a part of that crew, of that podcast. So I assumed he is not in good terms with Sergio as well. But apparently it seems like Ian has no problem with him, or Sergio doesn't have a problem with Ian, because he's commenting on his photos. Meanwhile, Sergio is looking absolutely ridiculous, I mean, look at the size of this guy, of these arms, and how hard he has gotten. But this is also interesting because of these comments, so Nick Walker, who had a huge beef with, with Sergio, is now commenting on his photos. He says they ain't ready, and Sergio is replying, and he's also congratulating Nick for his first cover in muscular development, which is amazing, by the way. So, after all the drama that happened like uh, until yesterday, I mean, I made a video about it like a few days ago, now they're all fine, it seems. Now they don't have a beef anymore, unfortunately. It would definitely be way more exciting for these guys to not be on good terms when the Arnold Classic happens. But, unfortunately, it seems like they fixed their problems. Maybe something new is gonna happen, I don't know, I, I, I hope so. I hope they're gonna get into new trouble. In the meantime, <laughs> maybe Sergio gets pissed off again for Nick saying he's gonna win, I don't know, we'll see what's gonna happen, but it seems like they are all fine now. Okay, next we have Charles Griffin, a guy who is basically known for having a thick waist, now he's trying to do a vacuum, and it's a pretty good vacuum, right? I mean, it's not a, it's not a weak vacuum, it's not like an attempt to do a vacuum, it's a vacuum. From the front, though, it doesn't really look like much, but again, it's, it's a, for a guy of his size and for a guy of his waist, it's very important that he can actually do a vacuum and have a good abdominal control. So look at it from the side. It's pretty deep, right? It doesn't look bad at all, no. But from the front, I don't know if he just relaxed it, if he lost the control, 
or it just simply doesn't look very good from the front. It kind of reminds me of Phil Heath's stomach. It probably or what Phil Heath's stomach would look like if he did a vacuum. So it doesn't look very good from the front. Maybe he had a hernia, hernia surgery or something like that. I don't know. But it doesn't look very good. It doesn't look nice. Maybe he just lost the control again and he wasn't able to do a vacuum actually. And that's why it doesn't look good. But overall, I mean, he's a thick guy. He, he's, he's very short and his rib cage is very wide and his waistline is not exactly tiny. But by trying to perfect the vacuum, it's going to give him better abdominal control. And it is going to make his waist appear a little bit smaller on the stage, which is basically what Arnold used to do and all the other old school guys who weren't exactly blessed with the prettiest structure of the abs or with a small tiny waist, which is basically the case with Charles Griffin. So pulling a vacuum is definitely a smart thing for him to do. But that is not all that is interesting about this video. There is also an announcement, basically, that he's not gonna be doing Chicago Pro, as we all thought. So, no, we were, we were all hyped to see him challenge Hunter Labrada, to see who's gonna win. Different kind of guys, different kind of physiques, but uh, no, it's not gonna happen, unfortunately. Very unfortunately, he's, as he says, 25 days out of a show and this was posted four days ago so if i calculated it right he's gonna be doing tampa pro instead of chicago i mean i was hoping to see charles griffin versus hunter labrada i was envisioning that i was talking about it so i'm kind of disappointed that it's not gonna happen but it is what it is we're gonna see him at tampa against tian valier and the other guys that's gonna also be very interesting as for now he looks really freaking amazing i mean look at this guy how full and round he is so, again, one more thing, I mean, he doesn't have great legs, no. His upper body is crazy big and full and thick, but the legs, not that big, not big enough. Here he is doing hamstrings, and his hamstrings are ripped, and they are good, they are developed, they are awesome hamstrings, for sure. What is more of an issue are his quads, not his hamstrings, but I think that's mainly genetic. I think he's working very hard, he just simply can't really make them grow. Can Charles Griffin qualify for this year's Mr. Olympia? It's going to be very hard. This season is going to be very, very competitive. A lot of great bodybuilders are preparing and there isn't a lot of shows left. So it's going to be very, very challenging for anybody really to qualify this year. I don't know if you guys heard, but Arnold Classic changed the, the, the rules again. So the winner of the Arnold Classic Men's Open will be qualified for the Mr. Olympia 2021 that happens in two weeks. As you can see, I highlighted that part for you. And the other divisions, no, not a single division. And uh, the second, third, fourth, and fifth place will receive the points. But for 2022, Mr. Olympia, the other divisions, it's going to be all qualifications for 2022. So 2021, Mr. Olympia and Arnold Classic, only the winner of the men's open will be qualified. And that's it. So there are no points for the top five for this year's Mr. Olympia, only for 2022. I don't know how do I feel about this. I mean, I was hoping that this is going to be a chance for a lot of bodybuilders to actually gather the points and for more top bodybuilders to actually get that Mr. Olympia stage this year. So I don't know if I'm happy about this. I don't think I am. You guys tell me what do you think. I'm curious. What is the opinion of the public? Do you like this or not? Tell me down below. Alright, we also have an interesting post uh, from Sean Roden. He posted the photo, I think this was like uh, the day before the Mr. Olympia 2018, where he looked absolutely ridiculous. I mean, take a look at this package. <laughs> how round, how full, how dry he was. This was really amazing. This was really, really an extraordinary physique and the conditioning was just the next level. But that's not the point. The point is his description, so he says, to be continued. And also his coach, Chris Asito, says, says, insane, but not your best. And in the parentheses, he says, yet. Which means we are gonna see Sean Roden on stage again. Unless they are teasing us, but most likely we will. Because he is posting a lot of videos, training really hard, very often. And I don't think he's doing that just for, for, for fun. Uh, I'm pretty sure he has a goal. I'm pretty sure he's preparing for a show. Which show is it gonna be? Is it gonna be Mr. Olympia again? I really hope so. I'm definitely very excited for a Sean Roden comeback. When is it gonna happen? Which show is it gonna be? I have no idea. Nobody knows yet. But as soon as I find out, I will inform you guys. So subscribe to this channel and stay tuned.
What about Dexter Jackson? When is he gonna compete again? <laughs> Probably never. He retired and he did that uh, on a high note. Like he is one of the best bodybuilders of all time right now. Basically, considering how many shows he has done, how many shows he has won, and this is him right now in his retirement. And he does look really good for a retired bodybuilder. He downsized, but he still kept a lot of muscle. He doesn't look like a person who doesn't lift like some of the other bodybuilders, right? No, no, Dax uh, saved his body, his joints are fine, his organs are fine, so there is no reason for him to lose all the muscle. He's probably like eating a couple of meals a day when he's hungry, he's training as hard, probably, and also he's probably doing like TRT or something, and he stays in a really good shape, downsized, but still, still looking very good. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.